in the name of personal injury law. Hello, this morning I have with me Steve Sinus and Steve Weston. They're both attorneys at the Sinus Dramus Law Firm. Um, Steve Sinus is in the Lansing office and Steve Weston is in the Kalamazoo office. Um, I know Steve uh, Weston has represented burn survivors for 34 years, so the topic we have today is, is the hope um, that we can learn from these uh, burn survivors. Yeah. So our firm uh, has been around for almost 70 years uh, doing all types of personal injury work. And, uh, you know, we, we, we look at it like we're equipped to handle uh, in, in any case involving somebody who sustained serious injury. Uh, but we were so happy and excited to have Steve Weston join the firm uh, last year uh, because of his unique experience representing these uniquely injured burn survivors. And so uh, I, I want to hear from Steve today and he can tell us uh, more about this area of uh, representation. Right. Well, what is unique about representing burn survivors, Steve? Well, there's really a couple of aspects that are that are different with burn survivors. Uh, first of all, is the nature of the injuries, uh, both physically and psychoemotionally. And secondly, is the different way that the attorney representing those survivors needs to to prepare and get to know the survivors and represent them. So both the lawyer's job and the uh, burn survivor's uh, extent and nature of injuries are both unique. And aren't the, the way these people are injured usually, it's complicated to figure out, right? You need experts, you need all types yes. of workup. Uh, people, people are wrongfully burned uh, through a variety of mechanisms. Over the years, we've handled cases of flammable vapors that have ignited as a result of uh, being sucked into water heater uh, air vents. We've had cases of uh, propane being delivered to homes uh, and the pressure checks and the leak checks weren't done according to code. And so propane escapes into the home and ignites and there are large explosions with fires. Uh, we've had gasoline vapors in workplaces uh, ignite. Uh, there have been electrical explosions uh, through faulty work uh, done on the electrical equipment, and the list really goes on and on. Scald burns is a, is a huge area of concern. Uh, so it, the, the mechanisms are, are varied, and it is a, a really important early on to get in and uh, collect and protect and seize the evidence as to the origins and cause of the explosion or the burn so that we can uh, determine later on what happened here. Sounds like there might be a whole host of types of damages that these burn survivors suffer, um, you know, obviously starting with the psychological damage of, of being a burn survivor. Can you tell us a little bit more about the damages? Yeah, uh, it's, it's very, very common uh, with burn survivors to go through multiple phases after their uh, burn injuries. Uh, most of our clients are burned over significant percentages of their total body surface. Many of them involve uh, the face and other visible parts of their body, um, and many of them don't. Uh, and there are parts that they can keep covered with clothing. And the, the psychological impact of those different burns are different. Uh, there is something called the hidden burn syndrome that uh, patients suffer from that when they have burn injuries and scarring that they can cover up or hide, they tend to have a more difficult time recovering from the presence of their burns than those patients who have very visible uh, burn scars because they learn earlier how to cope with public perceptions. Uh, there is also the psycho-emotional process that's caused by searing pain during the treatment process, during the grafting process, whether it's an autograft, which comes from your own skin, and the donor sites are super painful, the debridement process or cleansing of the burn wounds and the, and the wrapping and replacement of the skin that has been burned off, is excruciatingly painful the first time, but it's the second time and the times after that that really gets the patients depressed because they know what's coming now. Mm -hmm. 
And most of these seriously injured burn survivors go through a period of time where they want the treaters to let them die. And the, the unique and really uh, awesome thing about representing and working with these families is that we get to be part of the treatment team. We get to be part of the burn team to work them through and be sure that they get hooked up with the kind of counseling they need so that they can go through that let me die phase and start to have hope that they can participate in life in a meaningful way and that their life is not over. And that is a very rewarding thing about working with these folks. In fact, I will say that in, in three plus decades of working with uh, folks with broken limbs who frequently let that define what they can be as a person, Burn survivors, once they get through the emotional gauntlet of the treatment, tend to be some of the most uplifting and appreciative people in their view of life. And they really teach us about the privilege that we have of working with these people because most of the things that make us angry are just inconveniences compared to what these burn survivors go through. And, and they are just courageous really wonderful people. Well, are, are there groups that provide support for the burn injury victims that you know, to help them get to that point where they have hope again? There are, and oddly enough, one of the premier uh, groups in the nation and the world is based out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, and that's called the Phoenix Society. And the Phoenix Society for Burn Survivors is focused upon taking the survivor and helping them literally rise from the ashes like the phoenix bird and support them in walking forward in life and finding meaning, success, and uh, fulfillment as a burn survivor. Annually, the Phoenix Society hosts in different cities around the country what's called the World Burn Congress. And that is for burn survivors to come and attend and there are scholarships to help them to do that. and. Uh, what they do is they bring survivors together with treatment providers and professionals who care for them and provide resources, information, referrals, and fellowship and brotherhood and sisterhood so these people help each other realize that there is a future hope for more life. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. In the Name of Personal Injury Law is brought to you by the Sinus Dreamers Law Firm.